Daddy told you to cry. What? Daddy told me to cry. He what? He told me to cry. Are you serious? Well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your right chair extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You guys already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a quick favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. For a favor. <laughs> Come on. Let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today? Man, oh man. So, funny Willis, it's finally over. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Yes, it's over for you. According to Newsweek, you blew it. You had it in your hands and you fumbled the bag. Yes. Fonny Willis, sit your ass down somewhere. Okay. You had one of the, you had one of the best case against Mr. Trump, but you couldn't do it because you were too, you were too eager, too eager to please. You had this little attitude about you that I know what's going on. You had the, the White House backing you up. You had Mary Garland backing you up. So you had, you walking around like you was untouchable and it rubbed everybody wrong way. You went around all these single men out here. You couldn't find one guy to lay up with. You had to find somebody that worked with you. Workplace romances are as American as apple pie. It happens to everyone. And when you get caught, you know, you walk around like you big badass out here that nobody could touch you. No, no, no. Look. I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So but now you have all the free time in the world. You go to Jamaica. You go to Mexico, Bermuda. You go to Africa. You have all the free time now. You can do all the travel with Nathan Wade. Okay. You could be as drunk as you want, get as loose on the goose as you want, because now you have all this free time. Okay. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis had been promising that, quote, the train is coming. She had wanted a televised trial to start on August 4th, but that is not happening. A Georgia appeals court putting a stop to the trial while a panel of judges decides whether Willis should be disqualified. The Court of Appeals has denied it. You're going to get disqualified. All this little mammy attitude you was having and the sassiness and whopping around and, yeah, you blew it, girl. He's not even scheduled to hear arguments on that part of it until October, just weeks before Election Day which makes it almost certain that there will not be a trial before in-person voters head to the polls in November. That guy, if you remember, when I first started doing content creator, Fanny Willis was in my sights because I see the way she was handling Young Thug Rico case, and I knew that she was going to blow it. And then they put this bigger case on her hands, and I definitely knew she was going to blow it. And she's about to <gasps> blow the Young Thug case. I said this before, I believe Young Thug is guilty. But the way that Fonny Willis is, she's not a, she's not a powerhouse. She's not that smart. Seriously, guys. So I know she's going to blow that too. Now, the, by the look of things, it seems like, uh, Mr. Biden is very disappointed on how Mary Garland, the AG, attorney general, how he handled this. If Mary Garland had pressed charges on Trump way before, like the year one, Trump couldn't have enough time to delay all the process. No. When Trump announced that he was running for president, you see Alvin Bragg, Letitia James, Fonnie Willis, Jack Smith, they all came after him within a six week period. And this is how Trump was able to push and, de and delay and delay. If Mary Garland had done this year one, it would have been a hard time for him to get over this. 
you know, he would have been going to court several times. But Merrick Garland dropped the bag also. And let me show you how devious the AG is. We have Eric Holder here. He used to be the attorney general for Obama. And he sits down and he reveals the secret. Go. Can you just describe a little bit in terms of um, the role of and how it would transform if an attorney general, we're not looking at things purely from the facts, purely from the evidentiary burden and how to meet it, but instead taking directives on who to prosecute from the president of the United States. Sure. If the president told a compliant attorney general, uh, I don't like what this congressman said about me or did about me, did to me over the course of the last two, three years, whatever, open an investigation um, on that person. That attorney general could tell a compliant United States attorney to do just that. Talk to a compliant FBI director who could be place uh, by the the president to open an investigation and then to just look through that person's life and look for anything that you possibly um, can find. Um, and uh, who's to say what you find in any person's life that might run afoul uh, of the law and even beyond that, the fact, the mere fact of an investigation of a person who is a public figure can be reputation ruining, can be politically damaging, not even if you find anything, just the, the fact that the investigation itself um, exists. And if you've got the full weight of the Justice Department, the full weight of the presidency, the full weight of the FBI um, focusing on somebody like that, um, that can be extremely damaging to not only that person individually, but to our democracy writ large. The accusation, just the mere accusation alone is damaging. And that's all they were doing. You can't tell me that Obama and Eric Holder did not perfect this. They've been doing this way before. Remember when the uh, the Tea Party folks was getting harassed? They were not getting their um, exemption, the tax exemptions when they were trying to run against Ob Obama. It was all Eric Holder. Same thing. Now we have Biden here doing the same thing, using the same playbook, putting. Merrick Garland as his pit bull against his enemies. This is why uh, um, Trump getting all his, his harassment because of Garland. But Garland done it too late. If Garland had done this earlier, year one, year two, Trump could not have done delayed. But they did it in the last minute, the fourth quarter. And this is how Trump was able to delay and push off and it's all because of Mary Garland. Mary Garland is going to be in trouble also. He's going to be in big doo-doo because he's been already been in front of the Congress and they asked him a simple question. Uh, were you aware that uh, D.A. Willis uh, hired her friend Nathan Wade to prosecute President Trump uh, as he met, that uh, Mr. Wade met with the Biden White House on two occasions for eight hours? I, I don't know anything about that. You know, yes, the reason why he did not say yes or no is because if he said yes, I spoke to him. He let the he let the cat out the bag. If he said no, and lied under oath, lied to Congress, and they did some more investigation, he'd have been in jail. This is why he ain't say nothing. He just kicked it down the road. But yeah, we saw your play. Thank you, Eric Holder, for opening your mouth and revealing the the, the game plan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So yes, all collusion. Mary Garland. Fonny Willis, Fat Ass Bragg, Letitia Jane, Jack Smith, they all were under the guise of Eric Garden. And thanks to Biden using him as a pit bull against his enemies. And it's all going to be revealed. Thank you, guys. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you lawyers, get off my lawn.